Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Crossover version 21.1, which is just released. So if you don't know what Crossover is, it is a compatibility layer which allows Windows games to run on the Mac OS operating system. It does this by translating Windows API calls into Mac OS API calls. So if you'd like to find out how to get Crossover working, all you have to do is to follow the link in the description for my video tutorial, which is going to show you step by step how to install Crossover and uninstall various games as well. If you click the link at the top of the description, you'll be taken to the crossover page where you can get a 14 day free trial. If you do make a purchase, I'll make a small commission and you'll be helping to support this channel and the work that I do. So one of the big standout new features of Crossover 21.1 is now the fact that we can run the Rockstar Social Club DRM. So this has been one of the most requested things. If you've been following my channel, you'll know that I've been covering this in the nightly builds and the beta builds of Crossover, and now we have a full official release of it. So we're now able to play GTA 5 using the legitimate versions that you've purchased either through Steam or through the Rockstar Social Club or even through the Epic Game Store. And you can play at far better performance than you can on a virtualization system like Parallels. However, through Crossover, we're able to get much higher speeds whether it's through the single player campaign or now we can actually play GTA Online. In the past I have covered that GTA Online has worked. In the initial stages of the nightly build you can get onto the GTA Online lobby but you couldn't actually join a heist or other players properly. However this has all been fixed and you can play the fully featured online multiplayer on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. Unfortunately we're not able to run games like the recent remaster of the GTA Trilogy. That's because these games have been wrapped in Unreal Engine 4 and this game uses some features which is not supported currently by DXVK on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So the implementation of the Rockstar Social Club DRM and also the Rockstar Games Launcher is really cool because it means that any version of GTA 5 will now function, whether it's the Steam version or the Rockstar Games Launcher version if you bought directly through them, or we can even get the Epic Games Launcher version working. So the Epic Games Launcher is not actually supported on Crossover. However, there is an open source implementation of the Epic Games Launcher called Heroic. This is based on the command line interface called Legendary. So Heroic is the graphical user interface of this open source project. And we now have full integration of Heroic with crossover. So we're actually running the macOS version of Heroic. And if I click on the wine settings here, we can actually choose the crossover 21.1 wine bottle. This is going to make use of wine that's configured within crossover. And it means that any game that we run through the Epic Game Store, once we've linked our account to Heroic, is now able to be run through crossover. So this is now tying up official support for it. We even have this mentioned on the announcement blog post. And there's even a tutorial about how to get Heroic running through crossover on the Codeweavers website. If you'd like to find out about how to get Epic Games or games working through Heroic, through Crossover, then please check the link in the description for my video tutorial, which is going to take you through step by step on how to get games like GTA 5 running if you have a legitimate copy through the Epic Game Store. So the next big feature of Crossover 21.1 is the fact that we now have official macOS Monterey support. So when macOS Monterey was still in beta, Crossover 21 was still having bugs with Monterey. Over time, they have managed to fix almost everything. However, when version 21.0 was released, they still had not implemented Xbox 360 controller support. However, this has now been solved and we now have official support for macOS Monterey. One of the things that has been casually missed from the Codeweavers announcement is the fact that we now have Origin support for Crossover. So we now can run any Windows game that requires Origin through Crossover. So in the past, I talked about various methods of getting Origin working. We needed to run some scripts just to run the installation process. It was a bit of a pain to update the Origin client as well, but that has all been fixed now. You can just go ahead and install any game, whether it's on Steam or just the straight Origin installer itself, and then go ahead and download and install any of those games. Of course, not all of them will work, but many of them do. For example, here I'm showing footage of Battlefield 1, and this game is running pretty well even in its single player campaign. I'm testing this on my MacBook Pro 16 inch with the M1 Max chip and 32 gigabytes of RAM. And this machine also has 32 GPU cores and it's running the single player campaign very well. So Battlefield 1 is running at 1080p at low settings and it doesn't look too bad. I've also tried to test the multiplayer of this. However, I didn't manage to get very far as it seemed to crash very quickly. I did manage to test the game Battlefield 5 so here I'm running the single player campaign at 1080p at the settings turned low. I'm running this on my MacBook Pro 16 inch with 10 CPU cores, 32 gigabytes of RAM and 32 GPU cores. And it seems to run this game very well. We're running at 1080p on the low graphics setting. And Codeweavers haven't really spent the time to optimize this game yet. It's very impressive considering what it is. I've also managed to test Battlefield 5 multiplayer as well. So this is running at 720p at the lowest setting. And I'm actually able to play a multiplayer game, which is quite impressive. It's not necessarily the most competitive or best experience playing this way, as the game does stutter occasionally. However, I'd say it's good for a casual game. Also, we're able to play games like Battlefront 
Battlefront 2 and I do consider this very impressive because this game runs relatively well especially compared to Battlefield 5 and Battlefield 1. The level of graphical fidelity here is very impressive and actually when we're playing online multiplayer it's still a very fun experience and it doesn't feel like we're playing through a compatibility layer. There's a process called shader compilation so when something occurs on the screen for the first time it might stutter for a few moments after it's cached that process and you return to that part of the level again then it won't stutter again. So I'd say that this is a very good experience. So in addition Code Weavers have also been working on compatibility for a whole bunch of other games including Fallout 3's, Morrowind etc. Here I can show you a game like Halo Combat Evolved it works excellently on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. I'm running here at about 90 100 frames per second and this is far better than the Parallels version of this game which really struggles to get this level of graphical fidelity and frame rate. Also we have a game like Skyrim, so this game was a bit bugged during the 21.1 beta where some of the textures were not loading correctly and it was flickering and it was very distracting. However, this is all fixed now. I'm running this at 1080p on high and it's running at 60 frames per second, which is what it's capped at. And here I'm playing the car game BeamMG and I'm not particularly good at this game, but I'm running this at 1080p at medium settings and it's running very nicely around 60, 70 FPS. So Code Weavers have managed to fix a bunch of issues with this game and it's running very nicely. And also one of the new features of Crossover 21 is the new Wine D3D backends. This is an alternate way of running DirectX 10 and 11 games without using DXVK, which some games crash for. So for example, the game Nino Kuni 2 will only launch through Wine D3D and it won't launch through DXVK, but it seems to run very well here. I can't actually see the frame rate of this game, but this is a fairly casual RPG, so it's not particularly demanding anyway, and it's good that it finally launches. So speaking of launches, there are two more that I want to talk about that haven't really been discussed by Code Weavers. One of them is Ubisoft Connect. We finally got this working again through Crossover 21.1. I haven't actually managed to test many of these games yet, but I will be sure to do so in the future, so stay tuned on this channel. The next launch I want to talk about is Battle Net. So this is now fully installable via Crossover. I have tried to test the game Overwatch and unfortunately it will not launch. However, I'll be testing other games on the Battle.net launcher in the future as well. If any of you manage to get any of these games working, please leave a comment and I'll be sure to test them out in the future myself as well. So that brings us to the end of the video. So if you haven't tried out Crossover yet, please make sure to click the link at the top of the description for my affiliate link. If you missed the recent Cyber Monday sale, don't worry too much, you can still use my coupon code. So if you go to the buy page of Crossover and you buy Crossover Plus, which is the version that I recommend, what you can do is enter the promo code Apple Gaming Wiki. And once you've entered that, you'll get a 25% discount. Code Weavers do really deserve the money. It's not just about the software. It's also the fact that they're the main contributor to the open source project Wine, which allows Windows games to run on Mac OS and Linux and also they are the main proponent of Proton which is going to allow Windows games to run on the future Steam Deck. Anyway I hope you found this video useful if you did please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.